So, ladies and gentlemen, today's video is on nakshatras. No, not nakshatras. Nakshatra lords, because the nakshatra lord represents very crucial aspects of our life. That's like the base. Uh, well, which nakshatra lord are we talking of today? One nakshatra lord? No. All the nakshatra lords. Well, you have nine planets in your horoscope. And assuming that all the nine planets may be sitting in different nakshatras. So then you have to check all the nakshatra lords of these nine planets, which are again the nine planets, of course. But this is specifically important when you are judging a horoscope uh, and seeing uh, what's the potential that this horoscope has. And most importantly, when you are judging dashas. So therefore, nakshatra lords are very crucial. See, what is the difference between a planet and a nakshatra lord? So, suppose uh, your Mars is um, sitting in uh, the fifth house, for example. And um, you may be thinking, okay, Mars is lording some house and he's sitting in the fifth house. So, he will give results of the fifth house and the houses which he lords. Okay. And yes, uh, by the way, this is a bit advanced astrology. So, if you are not aware of... Uh, basic astrology, then please go to my astrology basics playlist and watch it first, okay? And yes, if you're new to the channel, then also please subscribe to it down below if you want a consultation from me regarding your career or marriage or health or spiritual life, then my website is down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him irrespective of where your nakshatra lords are placed. So imagine a planet which is sitting in the fifth house. See, the planet, where the planet is placed or the houses which the planet uh, lords is like uh, the path. So that, that tells you through which path will you move in life. But the nakshatra lord's placement will tell you the source, which means you are you're going uh, from one place to the other. But... Which is more important, the path or the ultimate goal? Well, the goal is very important. The path is also important. I am not saying that the path is not important. But the objective and the aim of the path is the goal. If there is no goal, the path is useless. Okay. So therefore, many times you will see planets which are apparently well-placed, but they give very bad results. Why? Because their nakshatra lords could be indicating dustana houses. So in this example... If you take the example of Mars, if assume Mars is in a, a Revati Nakshatra, for example, okay. Mars is in Revati Nakshatra in the uh, fifth house. So that means it is in Pisces. Revati is in Pisces. Pisces is in fifth house. That means the Lagna has to be Scorpio, of course. Okay. So once you get Scorpio Lagna, then we need to check Mercury. Why Mercury? Because Revati is ruled by Mercury. Now, where is this Mercury placed? So imagine Mars is in Revati Nakshatra in Pisces. And if you see your Mercury uh, is placed in a Dustana house, the 12th house. So now what's happening is the Lagna Lord is placed in the 5th house because Scorpio is lorded by Mars. Uh, but the thing is, um, he's also the sixth lord here, okay? Scorpio, uh, Mars is a very tricky planet because he lords Adustana along with the Lagna, okay? So then you see, okay, Lagna lord and the sixth lord is sitting in the fifth house. But where is the Nakshatra lord sitting? If Mercury is in Libra, then it's in the twelfth house. So then it means that Superficially, the path which Mars is encountering is something to do with the 5th house, something to do with the Lagna, something to do with the 6th house. But what's the end result? The end result is 12th house, which is expenditure, loss, okay, hospitalization, all of these. Because the Lagna and the 6th and the 12th, these three are involved. Whenever the Lagna is involved with more than one Dustana houses, then there is definitely health problems. Uh, through nakshatras, of course, not planet. Planet also, but nakshatras are more uh, important. They are more crucial, actually. So now you know 
that yes uh, this planet is indicating some kind of uh, health problems okay and it can also indicate uh, like the fifth house is uh, linked with uh, shares sometimes okay if the eighth house is involved then if the 12th house is also involved then there could be huge tremendous loss in the share market so because that's speculation you know fifth house eighth house things typical so now you would be wondering oh my lagnesh is in fifth house it is in a friendly sign pisces is a friendly sign for mars but why in the universe am i losing all the money <laughs> because now the nakshatra lord of revati which is mercury is in the 12th house so mars is having the path of speculation or something to do with intelligence or speculating something or assuming something which is the fifth house sometimes projecting something which is the fifth house but what's happening at the end the 12th house is getting activated okay so <clears throat> um this is what happens now why do i say loss because if you check carefully for scorpio lagna which houses does mercury rule in the chart hmm mercury is a very interesting planet for scorpio because he lords of dusthana and he is also ruling the 11th house so mercury is the 8th lord and he is also the 11th lord so that is why i said if mercury is in the 12th there could be some uh, severe loss uh, 12th house of the bhav chart of course not lagna chart okay and as usual if you are clueless of what's a bhav chart then please type exotic astrology bhav chart you will find it okay so once you see these placements then you know that uh, things will be challenging for this person now let's take another example let's make it reverse a planet is badly placed so for example if uh, your 10th lord is in the 8th house then what he will say oh career is gone career is doomed this will happen that will happen it's like doomsday dasha starts and you lose your job or you, know, you just can't work your performance is down uh, your balance sheet is not very good <laughs> and you're feeling as if you should not be doing this work you should be doing some other work but now suppose this 10th lord is placed in the 8th house in a particular nakshatra so suppose um 10th lord is mercury for example for any chart and this 10th lord mercury <coughs> uh is um placed in the uh, 8th house okay so let's take the example of a virgo lagna so for virgo lagna what happens the 10th house is also ruled by mercury because gemini is in the 10th house and then we have the 7th house from virgo which is pisces so that means aries is the 8th house okay now which are the nakshatras within aries we have ashwini nakshatra then we have bharani nakshatra then we have kritika nakshatra only one uh, pada of kritika is there in aries so now imagine this mercury as the lagna lord and as the 10th lord is placed uh, in bharani nakshatra for example now suppose venus is placed in cancer in the 11th house wow this is just fantastic this is the best thing to have now what will happen is because the 8th house is linked with the 11th house and no other dusthana house is involved in this therefore what happens is you will feel that yes now i am able to make progress great progress why do i say this because if you check uh, bharani is lord venus not only is he placed in the 11th house check which house venus rules so for uh, virgo lagna venus is the second lord also which is the uh, house of money and finances okay and Uh, which is the other house taurus where is taurus for a virgo lagna ninth house wow incredible this could mean there is lot of inheritance coming to the father because the ninth house and the eighth house and the eleventh house are involved because eighth house is inheritance the ninth house is the house of the father and eleventh house is gain so gain of inheritance from the father okay if the fourth house is involved then it can mean gain of inheritance from the mother okay because the fourth house is the house of the mother 
So either ways, we see the second lord uh, is involved. Uh, it's uh, second lord Venus is in the eleventh uh, house. Okay, so then this is excellent, and Mercury himself is the tenth lord. So therefore, now you uh, somebody will come to you for prediction, and you will say, "Oh, Mercury is in the tenth. You know what to do, sir." Sorry, maybe you have to just do some work. You know, you can't do your own business. But Chatra Lord is in such a beautiful dignity. No, uh, it is very well placed. Then you must tell the person, yes, you can do business. You don't have to keep uh, working under somebody. Okay, you can have your own goals, your own set of um, methods, procedures, procedures. You can have your own vision. So then you can go and establish your own business. Okay, you have that much uh, business acumen. And once you do that, then you'll be very successful in life. Okay. So therefore, this is a very uh, beautiful way to know. So then uh, Mercury Mahadasha starts, for example, for this person. Then huge money will come in, you know, other investors will come because the 8th house and the 11th house are linked. Now people will come and open up their pockets uh, like anything. But you will tell, oh, 10th Lord is in the 8th and this person's career is doomed. And then this person, Mercury Mahadasha starts and he's like, wow. I have made so much money in Mercury. I'm just going on making money. Because the Nakshatra Lord of Mercury, Bharani Nakshatra's Lord Venus is in the 11th house. Fantastic placement. What else do you need in life? So therefore, these are very crucial things. Okay. So sometimes you see 7th Lord is in the 2nd, but the Nakshatra Lord of the 7th Lord is in the 11th house or is in the 2nd house. That's fantastic for married life. Okay. So now, you know, if people ask 7th Lord in 6th, is it good or bad? YouTube is filled with individual useless comments. 7th Lord is in the 6th. Is it good? Is it bad? What if Mars is in 5th? You know, anything can be there if Mars is in 5th. <laughs> so now you know how to answer these questions. You know, what if Mars is in 5th? What if 7th Lord is in 6th? What if Rahu is in 3rd? What if Ketu is in 4th? Okay. All the what ifs, just check the Nakshatra Lord and see where it is placed. And of course, disclaimer, Nakshatra Lord's placement has to be seen from the Lagna chart. No, Pao chart, all right? Do not uh, uh, confuse this with the Lagna chart. Always it has to be seen from the Pao chart, okay? Do not make this mistake. Otherwise, you will run into blunders, okay? So please do not do that. That will really uh, make your life more miserable, okay? So that will be all from my side. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you'll find my website also down below and some other videos related to nakshatras. I'll put it here. Okay. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him.